All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dowell. I am here to do a very special video about a Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame defensive end. His name is Kabir Bijabil Emilio. And um, Kabir is part of the Straightway Truth Assembly. Kabir is a Hebrew Israelite. The other day, Kabir called me and said that some people from ESPN wanted to interview him based on statements that he made about Aaron Rodgers 10 years ago. I told him to be careful because these people are only out for a story. Um, just be careful and only speak about things back then because you cannot speak about Aaron Rodgers right now. So to make a long story short, Brother Kabir decided to go along with the interview. So anyway, in his interview, um, and I've got two parts here. I'm going to include the first part of the interview, and then I'm going to include the second part. The second part was disturbing because you figured that the interview was done with and it was over with, but then this ESPN guy and this guy named Homer and apparently a former teammate of Kabir's, uh, they went on a smear campaign. Uh, why do I feel like that all of a sudden they need to put his life out in the forefront? I don't know. But some of the things that they said... They said that Kabir's belief system is bizarre. Um, they said that, um, and, and they actually asserted a lot of things and put a lot of opinions, but no facts in there. How do I know that? Because number one, I am Kabir Bajabio Million, KGB's pastor, Charles Dow Jr. And I know his belief systems. They don't know his belief systems. And the reason why people in this world, like us, seem so radical because it is radical when you are obeying the Bible and doing what Jesus did. When you are not obeying the Bible and not doing what Jesus did, then you're considered normal in this world. And that's where these cardinal-minded people like, these cardinal-minded people like Homer and, and the other guy, um, which I have just a little bit more honor and respect for because he kind of actually stuck up for him there. But this Homer guy, I don't have a lick of respect for. And Homer, over at ESPN, um, if y'all are so true, so honest, so forthright, and you've done your so-called investigation and stuff like that, then call me up and give me an interview, and we'll find out exactly what the truth is, because see, what we have is this. You see, Kabir is no longer a Christian, and there's a reason why. The three main pillars of Christianity is Christmas, Easter, and Sunday, and you cannot find none of them in the Bible. Yet and still, they are pagan, satanic traditions that are practiced. Worldwide in this world, and there's no Bible belief for any of it whatsoever at all. All you have to do is pick up your Bible and read it. That's all you have to do. Now, what's disturbed about Homer was is that he asserts and he says, People think you crazy. First of all, number one, we don't care what people think because we think people crazy and people think we're crazy. So now, what do we do? Because now we're diametrically opposed to each other and, and, and we're at a crossroad. So, what do we do? The, we've been where you are. You ain't been where we are. Not whatsoever, nowhere, anyway, shape, fashion, or form. So Homer gets on there and said, people think you're crazy. And then later on in the interview, and I might add, actually exhibiting some schizophrenic traits, he turns around and says to Kabir, this is where I think you're crazy. So which one is it? One minute you're speaking to people, are the people you? Or, or is the people somebody else? Because later on in the interview, you show that the people were you. And you lied when you say you've done an investigation on him where he said that it's okay for, because the Bible says you can beat your wives. And rather than making assertions out there, pick up the book, prove your claims of what you said that you have studied and believed rather than just putting opinions out there and then flying them out there in empty space. Now, here's the skinny of our ministry. Here's the skinny of our belief systems. Number one, we believe in being born again, born from above. That means you have to be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You must be baptized in his name, and you must keep his commandments. Now, the Bible says in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11, it talks about a Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week. Your religion out there, Christianity, which is nothing but Roman Catholicism, born out of the splinter cell of Protestantism, who protested against the church. They tell you that it's Sunday, but I dare you to pick up your Bible and see if you can find Sunday anywhere in the Bible. Not only that, I dare if you can find in the Bible any place where they actually change the Sabbath from Sunday. 
Just, all you got to do, instead of just going out there on these wild binges, doing smear campaigns based on opinions and not facts, and putting a spin in and trying to disparage this man's character, and, and trying to do your best to smear his life, and know nothing about the situation with his wife, you know nothing about the situation of his divorce, but yet and still, why does ESPN feel like that they have to get on this radio and get on the, the internet and actually broadcast all of his business out there and then do it in a very unjust and heinous way? Why? When they have no facts whatsoever at all. Now, anybody that follow the real true Jesus, the real Jesus Christ, you will be called bizarre, a fanatic, a crackpot and a kook. You know why? Because that same Jesus that you say that you love, and most of you, you don't really believe the Bible. You have your own religion in your own mind that you've conjured up. You don't even read the book, but yet still you're going to challenge someone who reads the book? Now, this Jesus, he said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you don't have no parts with me. Is that not considered radical? Jesus also called a woman um, a dog. Do you not consider that radical? Do you not consider that radical? Jesus also took a whip and went into the temple and beat the money changers out of it. Would that not be considered radical? So if we follow all y'all opinion out there, Jesus, the real Jesus, is very occultic. This Jesus y'all preach on Sunday, this fairy tale, this, 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 this uh, infeminate Jesus y'all be putting out out there, we don't know nothing about it because that ain't what the book says. This Jesus said that he's going to tell a lot of people out there, you depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Workers of iniquity are workers of lawlessness. In other words, you don't abide by God's law. You don't even keep it. He said, you depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Guess where you're going? To hell. Now, that's a radical Jesus, isn't it? That's the Jesus who we follow. So now, all of a sudden, we are out of step and lockstep because you can't obey the Bible and do what it says Homer over there at ESPN, and you're definitely out of your league when you come over here trying to fool around in the arena of, of the scripture. I've got a debate up here on this channel, on YouTube, where this past November, I went to Green Bay, Wisconsin. I've debated their leading theologian by the name of Ron Young, a head schoolmaster and a ruling elder, a ruling elder, a Jacob's Well assembly up there. I did. And I exposed the false religion and the false uh, holiday of Christmas and Easter. Go check it out. Pastor Dow versus Ron Jung. J-U-N-G, I think it is. Go check it out. And, and if if you got the integrity, the intestinal fortitude to be able to love the truth, because everyone is of the truth, we love the truth. Jesus said, the real Jesus, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And he also said, over in 1 John, John says, his commandments are not grievous. Now, 1 John says, if any man says that he loves Christ and he don't keep his commandments, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. That's pretty radicalized, isn't it? You, Jesus also said that there's going to be a lot of people that's going to be thrust in the outer darkness where there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't know how you're going to get there when you spurn keeping his commandments. When you choose to put traditional holidays above y'all's holy days. I don't know how you think you're going to get there. Homer. So it's easy. I, you know, I, and see, I hope my brother Kabir learned from this. You can't be fooling around with these snakes out here. Because this is what they do. See, and, and notice, one of the things he says, uh, I'm very supportive, especially of his wife. You don't know nothing about this situation. That woman has never obeyed her husband a day in his life. That woman filed for divorce. What does your book say in 1 Corinthians 7? If you read the Bible for what it says, what does it say in 1 Corinthians 7 chapter? Uh, if you don't know, I'll tell you what it clearly says. Let not the wife depart from her husband. And if she depart, let her be reconciled unto her husband. And if she's going to be the party, she's not going to reconcile. Guess what? She is to remain unmarried. That's pretty radical, isn't it? Isn't that pretty radical? And one of the things that they talk about, and, they, and which they try to accuse Brother Kabir of being a hypocrite, was judging. Now, let me tell you something. I judge. A righteous man judges because he don't mind being judged. 
As a matter of fact, this real Jesus said in Matthew 7, 1, judge not that you be not judged. See, it's not telling you don't judge. It's saying when you judge, look what it says, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. In other words, if Kabir can get on here and tell you by the mere fact, by the way that you're living, and I can judge righteous judgment based on what this book says, and you're transgressing his law, you're doing everything against this Bible and you only have a mental ascent religion where you think you're going to wish your way into heaven. You got another thing coming. No unclean thing is going to go in. So it's telling you right here that whatever measure you judge, it's going to be meet back to you again. So it's not telling us to judge. So if you're thinking that both of us, or like he said, him and Kabir, we're both going to get to heaven, you out of your mind. He, he even gives parables about the thief and the robber. He gives parables about those who try and instead of coming in through the door, they try to go up over the wall and stuff and try to get into the marriage supper of the lamb without a wedding garment. That's many of you and your false belief systems. That's what it is. And you ain't being checked on it. So since we want to go ahead and escalate this, we want to go ahead and we really want to uh, 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 you know, uh, bring this up to the zenith. That's what we want to do. And then like the hypocrites that you all are up there at ESPN. You want to turn around and give an interview, then you want to turn around and go on a smear campaign because something happened in that interview. You know what? The word of y'all got put out. That's what, because Kabir did an excellent job in that interview. Homer didn't do a good job whatsoever at all, period. So here is straightway belief system. Again, we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. We also believe in keeping the commandments. Yes, we do. We don't believe in transgressing them whatsoever at all. That's what we do. We believe in living a holy, quiet, peaceable, separated life. But you people can't be content with us being holy. You know why? Because righteousness reflects on your corruption. And we're not dirty. We used to be dirty. But now we have repented and turned from our wicked ways. And it's because the reflection of his righteousness, it brings condemnation on you. And that's the reason why y'all can't rest on this interview right here. The reason why you can't rest for the way that things went. And also got word that the producer of it didn't like the way the interview went because on ESPN, which is a sports station, they talk more about belief, which Homer is the one who was actually directing the questions, than they did about Aaron Rodgers' situation. Because Aaron Rodgers told to me, your yeah, brother, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. And you follow me? And the Bible says, and by their fruit, you shall know them. I'll tell you right now, Roman, you are, Homer, you are a rotten apple. That's exactly what you are. Now, I judge that straight up. And your, the Bible don't sin all around John 3, 16. You don't even know what it means. So if you don't keep the commandments, don't expect to go in. Because you know what else he said? He said at the end of the book, he says, For without a dogs, whoremongers, and sorcerers, and whoever loves and lives a lie, guess where they all going? To the lake. And then Homer, since you have lied on Kabir, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that all liars is going to have their part in the lake. That burn it with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, that's straight up truth. So how is it that we're trying to live a quiet and peaceful life? We're standing on this word, living this word, but you people out there can't be content with us actually following the real true Jesus. Now, we also believe in miracles, signs, and wonders, and do them because of the power of y'all. You'll find that in Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 15 all the way to the end. See, what I'm doing, instead of making assertions, I'm giving you sources to go to in the Bible rather than making blanket statements and then expect the audience out there to pile on and jump on. The book teaches you in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, you prove all things and you hold fast to that which is good. And yeah, I'm upset because the Bible also says Galatians 4.6, you can be angry, but sin not. So see, you see what I'm talking about? This is the type of ministry that he's in. It's a word ministry that we believe every single word that's in that book. And we live by that word. Why? Because Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of y'all. You out there, Homer, you live by your opinion. You live by your vain assertions and your unfounded theories. That's what you live by. And you're hoping to bring even more of a smear on his name because of the slanders, the tail bearers, the backbiters, and the accusers of the brethren. That's all the people are doing because, you know why? Can't nobody lay no sin to what Kabir's charged. What did he do wrong? Name me one thing he did wrong. Except he said what you don't like to hear. And in that, you condemn him. And you did that in your response. So give, give me a sin. 
Tell me what he did wrong. You can't, but I can show you all over this book what you've done wrong. Well, blessed are they that keep the commandments because they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter into the gate into the city. The Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week. It ain't Sunday the first day of the week. Rome, Catholicism, changed that in the third and fourth century. Go check it out. See, most of you are just playing religion. You're going out there to the church of your choice, doing all this paganism of uh, fertility. You're getting ready to do Easter. Getting ready, an unclean rabbit. How do you know it's unclean? Leviticus chapter 11. We ain't under that law. We understand that. Because workers of iniquity are going to depart from Jesus. <laughs> That's why I keep all running in on you. And you have been mesmerized by all the lies of Christianity. You can't even see the forest for the trees. You can't even see what's in front of you because they have so mesmerized you. Go and look at that theological whooping that I put on Ron Young. And you're going to find out who's of the truth and who's of the lie. Listen real carefully to both of us, Homer. At least I hope you will, but I don't think you will. Because what you're going to do is get out there on your little ESPN platform and you're going to lie on him again. That's what you're going to do. Now, i tell you who's bizarre. Y'all are bizarre because that bizarre behavior that y'all have is deeply and collectively embedded in the subconscious mind of man. I don't even think that even God himself can remove that reprobate mind that you got. Look, you ain't going to form a God in your own mind and expect that you're going to go to his kingdom and trash it all up with your sorry opinion while you don't live anything. You don't keep the commandments. You don't, Homer. You don't keep the commandments. How do I know that? Because a righteous man judge righteousness. That's right. Yet, he himself is judged by no man. Oh, uh, isn't that something? Well, we're really messing y'all up now, ain't it? So, a lot of assertions, a lot of opinions, and a lot of lies have been told ever since this interview right here. And it's sad. It's, it's so sad. Now, I want all you people to go out there because you get on this internet, you're going to find a bunch of people, maybe one or two I've ever met, no more than maybe two or three days, that's it. The rest of them, all of them, all false witnesses, they, they lie on me left and right. The one thing I will say to you is before you believe anything what somebody says about Pastor Dow or Kabir, Brother Kabir, you go and peer into them liars' lives. Go look into their lives and then see what type of life they live in and then compare their lives to Kabir's life and see who's living a righteous life. By their fruits, you shall know them. And then equally, go over there and listen to people who actually eat with me every single day who comes to the meetings every single year, who actually is sitting down and broke bread with me. Go hear that testimony. Why is it that people are so easily influenced on hearing a negative testimony about somebody? Would you want to hear somebody telling lies about you when you can't even sit up there and face your accusers? No, you wouldn't, would it? You wouldn't want nobody to get out here and do that, but yet still people do it. Homer just joined in the club and did the same thing. So, Brother Kabir, you stand strong. Yeah, he's strict in what he's believing in because the Bible is strict. Jesus is strict. You don't know how strict it is, Homer, because you don't read it. So I tell you what, Homer, I'll give you this ultimatum. If you go to church, go get your pastor and let's find a subject. I'll come to your place, to your church, and debate your pastor in front of your congregation on any subject that he wants to in this book right here. Any subject. Because there are a lot of things we believe that you don't believe. And we know it's in the book, but y'all don't believe it because it's tradition. Colossians 2.8, and I'm going to leave you with this. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of the men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You people should beware of all these false commentators, false sports analysts, false prophets, false teachers, false churches. Anytime you follow Christ. If they spoke evil of the master, they will speak evil of you. If they persecuted him, they'll persecute you. You can tell that Homer ain't living nothing because ain't nobody persecuting. Not for righteousness sake. Anyway, had to get out here and do this real quick before I get on my radio broadcast. Blogtalkradio.com forward slash straightway. And by the way, if you want to know what myself and Kabir Bajabil Amelia, KGB, Green Bay Hall of Fame, Packer, Defensive end believes, go to that website right there behind me and you can learn everything you want. But I will tell you this, you get ready 
to be hated of all men for my name's sake. And let me give you one more thing, the reason why Jesus is so radical. Jesus said, think not that I come to send peace on earth. I didn't come to send peace. I come to bring a sword. If I come to send a father at variance against his son, a mother against a daughter, and a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law, and a man's own foes will be they of his own household. That's pretty radical, isn't it? He come to bring a sword amongst the family. He going to test us, prove us, and try us. Hey, by the way, you can find that in Matthew, the 10th chapter. Start at verse 30 and read it to the end. You're going to find some more radical things about the real Jesus. Most of you playing games. You've got one life to live. Don't sit up there and be manipulated and coerced by these fork-tongued serpents that get on here and use the microphone as a weapon against, against a, a, a righteous brother that's standing on his word and living the truth. My name is Pastor Dow. I am Brother Kabir's pastor. Now, since we like going out there slandering and, and since we like defaming somebody, guess what? I'm the she I'm his shepherd, his pastor. Now you come over here and jump on me if you want to. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful wicked end. I mean weekend.